So the next random process that we want to study in detail is something that we call the Poisson process. So let's take a look at this specific random process. The Poisson random process is actually comprised and kind of constructed from some random sequences that we talked about earlier in the class. One of those random sequences is the random sequence tau of n. This is what we called the inter-arrival time random sequence. So we talked about modeling arrival times and the exact things that were arriving was a little irrelevant. That could be, you know, people arriving in a line at a shopping center or people coming through an intersection or packets arriving at a router. Exactly what was arriving was a little irrelevant, but we talked about modeling those with this inter-arrival time sequence, which takes or uh, keeps track of the amount of time in between arrivals. So if you had to write down a sample function for this random sequence, it might look like something like 0 0.8, 0 1.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. The amount of time it takes for the next thing to arrive. In general, we model this random sequence as IID, which means independent and identically distributed. Independent means tau at time 0 is a random variable independent of the random variable tau at time 1 independent of the random variable tau at time 2, etc. And the identically distributed part tells us that at each time we assume that the distribution of those random variables is the same. And often we model the distribution of those random variables as exponentially distributed. So arrival times are frequently modeled as exponentially distributed random variables. And an exponentially distributed random variable has this probability density function. So this equation right here is basically saying that regardless of the time n, the arrival time, tau, has a distribution that is exponentially distributed. This parameter of the exponential distribution, lambda, is what we call the rate parameter, and it controls the numbers in this random sequence. So when lambda is very large, that means that things arrive very quickly, so the inter-arrival times would be very small. And then on the flip side, if lambda is very small, that means the rate at which things arrive is very slow, which would mean that inter-arrival times are very large numbers. So that rate parameter controls how fast things arrive. So the inter-arrival time sequence tau of n is one thing that we need when we talk about the Poisson random process. The other thing is the random sequence t of n that we described earlier. And this is the random sequence that is the time to the nth arrival. So t of one is a random variable and it indicates how long it took for the first arrival to arrive. t of 2 is a random variable, and it indicates how long it took for two things to arrive. Tau or t of 500 is a random variable, and it tells us how long it took for the 500th thing to arrive. So in general, if you plot sample functions of t of n, it is a monotonically increasing signal because the amount of time it takes for the ninth thing to get there is always less than or equal to the time it takes for the tenth thing to get there. Because to get ten arrivals, you have to have nine and then another one. If you do the math, you can write it down in terms of the tau function as this. So the nth arrival is nothing but the amount of time it took for one and two and three and four all the way up to n to arrive. So it's just really the cumulative sum of all the inter-arrival times up until time n. If you do the math on this, assuming that the inter-arrival times are independent and identically distributed exponential random variables, this is actually not too horrible to do because you just have to do a lot of convolution. And it turns out that t of n has an Erlang density, which basically says that it has this probability density function. So this one's a little bit different because this is a function of time n. So if you tell me what time you're looking at, what time n, you want to know the time to the nth arrival, then I can write down the density function for that random variable. So as time goes on, this density function is changing, whereas for the inter-arrival times, it was the same for all time. So these are the things that we need to know to talk about the Poisson random process. One thing to note is you can actually write an equation that relates the inter-arrival time sequence to the time to the nth arrival random sequence, and it's given by this equation, which is fairly obvious. Basically, the time in between the n minus 1th arrival and the nth arrival 
can be written as this equation. So tau of n is just the difference in the times to the n and n minus one arrival. And we'll use that here in a little bit when we do some derivations of the density function of the Poisson random process. So just kind of remember this equation for the future. All right, so now we're actually ready to define the Poisson process. So we notate it with the quantity n of t. So it's capital N because it's a random process. And we use n because really what this is, it's kind of a counting process. The Poisson process at any given time t tells us the number of arrivals at time t that we've had. Okay, so this is really kind of what's called a counting process. How many arrivals have I had at time 5? How many arrivals have I had at time 50? How many arrivals have I had at time 100.2? And so on. So the Poisson process really gives us a count at time t of the number of arrivals that we've had. We can write it in this form. n of t is a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of unit steps that are all shifted by the time to the nth arrival. So if I actually expand this, what I get is u of t minus t1 plus u of t minus t2 plus, and then this just goes on for forever. So if we think about what this looks like, this unit step here is a unit step that is off for all time until it turns on at time t of 1. So the at the first arrival time, this is a unit step that turns on. This unit step function is off for all time until it turns on at time t2, and so on. So if we kind of picture these unit step functions turning on, if we pick t to be some value, then out of all infinite number of terms in this summation, only a finite number of them will be on. So maybe we pick a time t that is larger than time t of 1, and it's larger of time t of 2, but it's less than time t of 3. Well, then all of these unit steps will be off, only these two would be on, and then we would have a Poisson process equal to 2. So we would have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Visually, we can kind of sketch out what that looks like. So let's just draw kind of a notional sample function of this Poisson process. When we label some of these time to the nth arrival times on the time axis, so I'm just kind of picking some points that might be examples of the time to the nth arrival. And then what I'm going to do now is actually plot an example of n of t, this Poisson process. So when I haven't had any arrivals yet, so I've had no arrivals, my Poisson process is just equal to zero because I haven't had any arrivals yet. But then at time t of 1, I have had an arrival, so my Poisson process jumps up to a value of 1, and it stays there until we reach the second arrival time, the time to the second arrival. At this point in time, I've now had two arrivals, so these two unit step functions are on, so when I evaluate my Poisson process at any time from t2 up to two, t of 3, my Poisson process is equal to 2, so that's what it's equal to. And then at this arrival time, at the arrival time of the third arrival, my next unit step turns on and my Poisson process jumps up to 3 and it holds that value all the way till t of 4, where it jumps up to 4, etc. So this is just an example of what the sample function looks like and it always kind of has this staircase look. So this is a Poisson process sample function and they always kind of have this staircase look because of how they're defined and how they're constructed. So that is a Poisson process. This is what its sample function looks like and is really defined in terms of these time to the nth arrival and inter-arrival time random sequences. And we'll use that fact when we do some math in the next video.